Brentford have had one of the best starts in the league this season, and it isn't luck. Let's dive in. Brentford are performing excellently right now, and they are sitting comfortably in mid-table. Brentford are one of the scariest teams in the Premier League to play against, as they are an adaptive team. They've developed a new quick start strategy, which their key player, Brian Mbwemo, has been a key part of. So, how are Brentford cooking so much? And how do they actually keep scoring early? Thomas Frank has been described as one of the most pragmatic and innovative coaches in the Premier League. And he, with their new set-piece coach, former Republic of Ireland midfielder Keith Andrews, have come up with a surefire tactic to help Brentford score early. But it is not down to just that one tactic, which we'll provide details of later on in this video. Without Thomas Frank's overall strategy, which fits well with Brentford's approach to transfers, that tactic wouldn't even work. Brentford have been smart about their transfers since 2015-16 when they were in the championship. They scrapped their academy in what was regarded as a controversial move to target undervalued, stagnated or released footballers, old or young, who they then develop or help find form. That transfer system has led to the signing of the likes of Christian Norgard, Christoph Ayer, Johan Wisser, and of course, their key player, Brian Mbwemo. Become one of our key players by liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more. Thomas Frank became Brentford's coach in 2018, and in his first full season, the 2019-20 season, he led them to the championship playoff final against Fulham, which they lost. He led them to winning the playoffs in the following season and becoming the first manager to lead the Bees into a top flight season since 1946-47. Frank has been an incredible manager for Brentford since then, notably helping them finish 13th in their first Premier League season. In their second season, they finished just a few points from qualifying for a spot in Europe. They could have performed better in the 23-24 season as well as their third season in the top flight, if not for crazy injuries. They only got 39 points that season and could have been relegated if not for some players we'll talk about and Thomas Frank's superb tactics. They're an extraordinary team. What they do always makes sense. Every corner is a headache for the opposition. They are compact. This season, they have a high press. Thomas is one of the best. Man City boss Pep Guardiola said, praising Thomas Frank and Brentford. And Guardiola is right. Brentford are an extraordinary team to play against. Since they were promoted to the Premier League, set pieces have been a key part of how they play. They scored 10 goals from set pieces in the 23-24 season. Brentford have always worked with brilliant set piece coaches. Gianni Vio worked with them at some point after having coached at Tottenham and AC Milan. Then they had Bernardo Cueva, who Chelsea quickly snapped up to solve their own set-piece problems. Despite losing these incredible set-piece coaches, Brentford have got a suitable successor. Former Republic of Ireland midfielder Keith Andrews, among other applicants, and so far, they've made the right choice. Under Andrews, Brentford have been on another level, but more of this later on. Brentford don't only rely on set pieces to cause problems for opponents. They're a pretty well-oiled and balanced team under Thomas Frank. Frank, since the 24-25 season began, has explored different formations depending on the opponents. His teams used the 4-2-3-1, the 4-3-3, the 4-4-2 and the 5-3-2 formations. But no matter the formation, Frank's strategy is that he wants his team to attack the opponents and dominate when they can. So he sets up a high line, which allows Brentford players to be close to each other and retain the ball by quickly executing short passes to keep the attack going. With their high line, Brentford have the advantage as they have numbers in the opposition half. This makes it difficult for opponents to have the ball because Brentford utilise this advantage by ruthlessly pressing their opponents. They contest 
for every second ball and keep on moving relentlessly to attack spaces and put more bodies in the final third. With this, the team is able to create chances on chances. It's on this foundation that Brentford have now added their new highly effective quick start routine, which has allowed them to score goals under 40 seconds in three matches in a row. They even scored another one within two minutes. Brentford are just too impressive at the moment. Despite favouring attack, they've also shown that they can be defensive when the situation calls for it. They'll drop back into a back five and keep a low block to prevent the opponents from scoring. Their game against Crystal Palace at home in their first match of the 24-25 season showed exactly how capable they can be in defence. So, how does the new tactic work with Frank's overall strategy? Using their high line and putting players in the opposition half, Brentford immediately, when they kick off, play the ball back to the keeper or a defender who then kicks the ball forward. Then, Brentford use their tall players to win the ball. When they lose the ball, they quickly win it back. In their match against Manchester City, City did get the ball, but because of Brentford's pressing, they couldn't do anything before Brentford got the ball back, before the City players knew what to do with it and scored. Now, as brilliant and tactically innovative as Thomas Frank is, the key to his style are the players who understand exactly how he wants them to play. Well, credit to Thomas too for being able to easily transmit his ideas to the players as well. Brentford's players are impressive and they have a common characteristic. They're energetic and physical. They're one of the least expensive squads in the Premier League and are competing with some of the big boys. They've got Mark Flacken, who had a bit of a shaky start in the 23-24 season after Arsenal signed David Raya from Brentford, but since then, Flecken has grown and become more confident. He's improved his shot stopping and is great with long balls from the back. Long balls have now become a part of how Brentford play, especially since they have a player like Christopher Ayer. Aya is key to Brentford's defence and strategies due to his height and his playing style. Aya loves to engage in duels. In the 23-24 season, he won 63.7% of his duels. But where he stands out the most is his aerial duels. Aya won 73.9% of those. He isn't the only fighter Brentford have got, and that is key to how they play. There is also centre-back Nathan Collins, who's been great for Brentford so far in the 24-25 season. He has been a dominant figure in defence for them, putting in tackles, intercepting the ball and winning his aerial duels. Other key players are in defence. Rico Henry is a reliable and efficient fullback when needed. Ben Mee, who's 35 now, doesn't seem to be playing at the moment, despite his ageing legs, was an excellent defender in his heyday. We'd actually label him as criminally underrated back in the day. And will certainly do a job when he's called upon. The man who starts over him right now is Ethan Pinnock of Jamaica. He's a great CB who's good with his feet and actually loves a goal too. And importantly, has a few years on Ben Mee as he's 31. In the midfield... Brentford also have the hard-tackling, no-nonsense, hard-working defensive midfielder Christian Norgard, whose primary role is to completely crush any form of attack from the opposition. The midfielder has continued from where he left off in the 23-24 season by helping Brentford win back possession, intercept and, of course, tackle. Now, usually... Norgard is smooth with his defensive contribution to the team, but he can be responsible for causing a lot of fouls. I guess this is unavoidable due to the role that he has in the squad. Joining him in midfield is Vitaly Janelt, Keen Lewis Potter, who often appears from the bench and will pitch in with some goals over the season. Matthias Jensen and Josh De Silva are also great options for the Bees. In attack, Brentford have got Mikel Damsgaard, who Thomas Frank said is finally delivering on his potential. Now, Damsgaard is 
brilliant from set pieces and has an eye for an assist. He added two to his tally when Brentford beat Wolves 5-3 and it's a great game to watch in match week six. The creative forward has shown his ability to create chances and Brentford will need that now more than ever. Why? Well, there's the elephant in the room, but also Johan Wisser, who scored three goals and provided an assist in four matches since the 24-25 season began, is now injured. Now, Wisser has a direct replacement in winger Kevin Schade, who Brentford broke their transfer record for in the 23-24 season. However, injuries have prevented Schade from making an impact in that 23-24 season. Now, he has to be more for the team since Wisser is injured. So will Wisser's injury change the trajectory of Brentford's season? In the absence of Wisser, there's now much more pressure on Brentford's talisman, Brian and Buemo, especially since Ivan Tony has left the club. Mbwemo has been crushing it for Brentford, though, so far. He scored six goals in seven appearances. Now, as of the time of this recording, Mbwemo now has a total of 28 goals and 21 assists and 49 goal contributions in the top flight. The forward has now surpassed Tony's 47 goal contributions for Brentford in the Premier League. He will, however, have some help in the likes of Igor Thiago, a new signing from Liverpool, Fabio Carvalho, who has already registered an assist against West Ham and scored against Wolves. A good option if the main men get injured? Hmm. So, no Tony? No problem. Now, Tony was no doubt an essential player for Brentford and the club felt his absence when he was unavailable for the larger part of the 23-24 season. However, it was when Mbwemo got injured in December that Brentford completely crumbled. Even the return of Ivan Tony couldn't stop the horrible run of form that the Bees underwent at the time. Now, from that December till when Mbwemo returned, Brentford only won eight points from a possible 51 and 14 games. Out of the 39 points Brentford had, Mbwemo helped them get 31. And despite his injury, he finished the season with nine goals and six assists. Now, as you have seen, he is on course to be bettering this tally this time around. The talismanic forward is still hungry for more goals and assists and has even been tipped to become a target for bigger clubs. So will this be Mbwemo's last season for Brentford? So Brentford are a decent team, but... They can be better than the mid-table team that they currently are. They still have problems with their team shape when it comes to defence. As we've mentioned earlier, they have five men at the back and they play a low block when they want to defend. And the problem is that, well, it doesn't always work for them. When they play against teams with decent forwards, despite having quick starts, Brentford find it difficult to keep a lead. And they lose from these winning positions and have done in the new season. The good thing is that their manager is pragmatic and is open to evolving his team. So the question is, will they improve on their defence and finish higher on the table? Maybe even challenge for a European spot? Let us know what you think and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more.